Everyone knows Kingdom Hearts. I don't think there exists a single person currently that's into JRPGs that doesn't know about it at this point. Going back in time, when I was younger, there was only Kingdom Hearts 1 for the PS2 and its sequel. No, not that. Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories for the Game Boy Advance, and I've only heard about it due to my sister recommending it to me after watching the commercial. One day at a game store, I saw the cover and it looked hokey to me as all hell. A Disney fighting game is what I initially thought, and I thought that this concept would go nowhere at the time. But lo and behold, it would reach people's hearts far and wide. Soon people will know about this game as the game that had Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Goofy Goof, and that dude with the key, and Final Fantasy characters. Now, regardless of what you think of the story or the gameplay, you cannot deny the influence this game has. Come on, you and I both know the world almost exploded over Sora being the final Smash character. Kingdom Hearts is just that big, and the man behind the whole Kingdom Hearts franchise is none other than Tetsuya Nomura. Tetsuya Nomura is a Japanese video game artist, character designer, and director currently working for Square Enix. However, he didn't start the company making designs at all. He first started out as a debugger for Final Fantasy IV in the 1990s. After that, under the tutelage of Tetsuya Takahashi, he would design monsters for Final Fantasy V. I'll bring up Takahashi later in this video because he is significant for another JRPG franchise. Nomura would be recognized for his ideas and drawings which would later grant him the position of graphic designer for Final Fantasy VI, then fully replace Yoshitaka Amino as a lead character designer for Final Fantasy VII, as well as having a major influence on the story of the game. And go figure, this would also end up being one of the titles he is most known for by his designs, you know, aside from this game. He would continue to design characters and monsters for following Final Fantasy games while working on other projects like Urgai's God Bless the Rain, and yes, that's the actual full title of that game. In the 2000s, he would design characters for the beat-em-up The Bouncer and continue doing work for the Final Fantasy games, more specifically Final Fantasy X. And I know there's been many debates saying that this Final Fantasy game is the best, but personally, I'm more of a Final Fantasy IX and XII type of guy myself. During the 2000s is also when Nomura would be the director of Kingdom Hearts and we've come full circle. From that point onwards, he would go back and forth between working on Kingdom Hearts games while doing the character designs for the Final Fantasy games. He would also do character designs for other games like The World Ends With You. This is a very abridged version of the work he has done because he has honestly done a lot of work. Mostly Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy games, but you guys already know what comes next. I'll look at his character designs and his illustrative work while I point out things that I found interesting about his style. Yeah, yeah, we all know about the belts and the zippers, but let's put a pin on that and go all the way back to when he first started doing the character designs for Final Fantasy VII and go from there to see how his character designs developed and or changed. From the jump, you could easily see that his style is more akin to a traditional anime style. Spiky hair, large anime eyes, etc, etc, it's all there. And this would technically be the first and last time he'll do a style leaning this close to a typical anime in the mainline Final Fantasy games. From this point onwards, they would have more realistic proportioned characters. Nomura would still do an anime style for other games like Kingdom Hearts and The World Ends With You, but I'll get to those games later. And to be completely fair, the characters in Final Fantasy VII sort of had to be mostly anime chibi characters, since this was the transition from 2D to 3D graphics for the Final Fantasy series, so they sort of had to take baby steps, so to speak. Hence why, despite Cloud's concept art looking like this, the in-game sprites sorta had to look like this, and thus the more had to draw in a style like this. Also, if you compare the main cast designs to any of the Final Fantasy characters before this, you could definitely see the change the series was going through. Cloud, Tifa, and Barrett are part of a resistance group trying to stop a company from abusing its power. It goes without saying that this is definitely a more grounded, industrial setting, therefore the designs have to follow suit. I mean, can you imagine the Warriors of Light walking around Midgar? If you think about it, all Tifa was wearing is a tank top with suspenders, a mini skirt, red boots, and red and black gloves that gives some indication that she's a hand-to-hand -hand fighter. Really, the only peculiar characters technically are Red 13, Vincent, and I guess Kate Sith, but they actually at least have in-game reasons as to why they are the way they are, and two of those characters are a result of this guy's experiments. Moving on to Final Fantasy VIII, you can see Nomura transition to a more realistic style. If you compare Squall to Cloud, you can see that he is drawn with more anatomically accurate details. Nomura even described this to be his actual style of drawing. Parasite Eve also takes after his true style since that game is pretty grounded as well. The character designs are equally so since the game does take place in New York, you don't need to give the characters too much of a fantastical design. A t-shirt and jeans could get the point across well enough. 
But going back to Final Fantasy VIII, little details like the eyes being a bit smaller, drawing and rendering the top lip, widening the neck, including the Adam's apple, are nice choices that can add to their style to make it slightly more realistic. Also, no one's hair is unnecessarily spiky, except Zell, I guess. Sometime after, he did do character illustrations for Brave Fancy Musashi in which he did heavy thick line art with sharp edges and a slight cell shading, but I'll get back to that when discussing The World Ends With You. Okay, now I'll talk about the belts, zippers, trinkets, accessories, etc, etc. In the year 2000, more designed characters for a game called The Bouncer, and this is where I personally think he started the excess accessory trend he is known for. Looking at Sion, you can easily see what may have been the progenitor for Sora's design, but assuming that isn't the case, you can still see how Nomura absolutely starts decking out certain characters. The collar, the necklace connecting to it, the wallet, key, strap, chain thing, and this thing connecting to his gloves. Mind you, this game is called The Bouncer, a game about three bouncers. Needless to say, you don't really get that vibe, from the main character at least. The two others at least seem like the type to stop underage people from entering a bar, which is rich considering Sion's only 19, but hey, stopping people from entering a bar and going into one yourself is different enough, I guess. After the bouncer, Nomura worked on designs for Final Fantasy X, and looking back at Final Fantasy VII and VIII, which are in modern or at least semi-futuristic settings would of course call for modern designs. For example, Squall wears a basic leather bomber jacket, and Barrett's just wearing a standard vest. Final Fantasy X, however, is a bit different in this aspect. But before that, I want to talk a little bit about the overall art design of this game. Apparently due to the convincing of Yusuke Naoda, the Square staff decided to make Final Fantasy X an Asian-themed game, thus Nomura designed the characters to have Asian features. On top of that, sub-character chief designer Fuji Nakashima wanted to make sure the characters from different places and cultures had different characteristics to set them apart. Let's look at the protagonist Titus, or Titus, I, I, I'm gonna call him Titus. Once again, it's that chain wallet thing again. First of all, Titus is not really from Spira, which is the setting for Final Fantasy X, and that makes this technically an isekai. Therefore, it stands that his outfit would be very different from the others. The other characters, however, sort of have a tribal feeling to it. Riku is also slightly different from then due to her being Albed, which is a tribe of technologically savvy people that all have blonde hair, green eyes, and spiral pupils. Hence why I guess they're designed with goggles and masks, although I do wish there was more to their designs that express their mechanical interests other than the goggles. But I guess that is sufficient enough. Yuna's design is something I like in particular. Again, this game was meant to be heavily Asian inspired, so she's wearing something similar to Akama and has an overall very traditional style of clothing. While in Ten2, she's showing more skin, has a wilder hairstyle, dual wields guns, and needless to say, this design change is a very nice representation of her character development. She started out as someone that had to go on a pilgrimage and die to attempt to save the world through a strong but false religious devotion while hiding her true feelings under a mask. To someone that's more stern but playful and much more outspoken to things she is is not fine with. There's a reason why this moment in Ten2 sticks out so much. I don't like your plan. It sucks. I don't even like Final Fantasy X, let alone Ten2 as a whole that much, but I'd be straight up lying if I said Yuna isn't one of my favorite characters in the whole Final Fantasy series. After that though, for the Final Fantasy games, you could sort of say his style stabilized? He doesn't draw with the level of realistic proportion of Final Fantasy 8 or 10, but you can see that all of his designs have a certain commonality that reaches a good middle point between this style and the style he has for Kingdom Hearts. So let's move on to that. The game franchise everyone really likes or really hates. I already mentioned how much Sion resembles Sora, but let's take a deeper look at his design for a bit. Black and white hoodie, a red onesie with a zipper going straight down the middle, white gloves, and very big yellow shoes. And that chain wallet thing again. Now personally, this eluded me at first, but after some research, I realized that Sora's design was based around Mickey Mouse's trademark design. Call me an idiot, but I've never noticed that for the longest time. And with a game that crosses over Final Fantasy and Disney, Sora is a character that bridges the two perfectly. And honestly, it's a lot better than the initial design in which he was a lion hybrid with a chainsaw weapon? We also get slight redesigns of Final Fantasy characters like Cloud, Squall, now called Leon in this game, Yuffie, and some others. You can say they have been Disneyed. At the same time, Nomura gave Donald and Goofy modified designs based on their originals, all with zippers and pockets. You could say they got nomura especially Mickey. Also, I preface this to say that I don't hate these add-ons, the accessories, the belts, the zippers, it's perfectly fine by me. Besides, I like how they changed just enough from both Disney and Final Fantasy characters to mesh them well enough together. You know, to sort of make them meet in the middle. 
Another thing I appreciate is something that I mainly only saw in Kingdom Hearts 1, which is the squash and stretch of the character designs. As the games went on, it felt as though the non-Disney characters sort of lost a bit of that Disney magic, so to speak. For example, Sora's design. You'll notice that his Disney goes down and his Final Fantasy goes up, if you know what I mean. His hands and shoes being the most obvious changes. They're no longer the gargantuan size that they were in Kingdom Hearts 1. Hell, even Kairi and Riku had hilariously large shoes in the first game. And overall, there was a certain soft roundness that was all over the initial designs that slowly went away as the games went on. Currently, characters are now wearing things like this. Okay, okay, I know that these images that I'm showing are from the Super Groupies collaboration Nomura did, but these images aside, if you look at current Kingdom Hearts art, you can see that the general feeling is vastly different from what it once was. But I'll talk about that more when discussing his illustrations, and speaking of vastly different styles, let's talk about The World Ends With You. The World Ends With You has a very specific art design, different from something like Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts, and that is to say that Nomura has a large range in his style. I mentioned this many times in other artist analysis videos, but you know an artist is skilled when they can manipulate their style to fit different settings and themes. However, I should also point out that while Nomura did work as a character designer for this game, the lead character designer is Gen Kobayashi. So if I accidentally show any work that I say is designed by Nomura, but is actually designed by Kobayashi, my bad, their styles are very similar in this game. The World Ends With You has a very particular modern street punk aesthetic. Think Jack Ryan Radio but increase the level of anime. And I don't know if I explained this right, the point is everyone and everything looks cool and stylish. I said this before but Nomura drew in a very sharp anime style for Brave Friends and Musashi and I'm sort of glad he brought it back for this game. From looking at the way the clothing was drawn and even how the arms, hands and hair are drawn, you can see that it has none of the soft curves that characters in Kingdom Hearts had. There's also areas of high contrast that blend into the line art which is akin to graffiti which matches the urban setting. And speaking of that, since the game does take place in Shibuya, fashion and general urban aesthetic will naturally play a part in the character designs since the area is known as one of the fashion centers of Japan. Some of things like headphones, mp3 players, fanny packs, pins, beanies, necklaces, and that damn chain wallet thing again in a sense is all part of the cool aesthetic of this game. Let's look at Beat for example, beanie with a skull design, large black chain with a skull around his neck, tank top to show off his muscular build are all indicators that show a tough hoplite character. While Shiki has on a cap, wears a yellow and white drawstring hoodie which is layered over a pink crop top, she's also got on an olive green miniskirt and knee high boots. Overall a style that shows a lot of skin while having matching and reoccurring colors which tells us about an outgoing character with a bubbly personality. Now for the people that actually played the game knows that everything I just said about her design in correlation to her personality doesn't make any sense, but we'll move on from that. The sequel obviously carries a lot of these design aspects, although there are some things I do wish they kept from some of the initial designs, such as Beat Skull motif which is sort of now gone. Although judging by some initial concept art, Nomura did consider it. The same goes for Neku's headphones, which also ultimately did not make it to the final design. I know Neku sort of got rid of them at the end of the first game to show how much he's grown, but I do sort of like how it looks around his neck. All of that withstanding, the other characters do have very distinct designs that all show off their personal fashion sense. Another JRPG he provided some character designs for is Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and this collab so to speak was very special, because remember Nomura had worked under Takashi because he had a potential plotline for Final Fantasy 7, however due to the overall project being too dark and complicated, it ended up being its own thing, and that ended up being now what is called Xeno Gears. Takahashi realizing that the company was going to give all of its undivided attention to Final Fantasy games, the likelihood of Xenogears getting sequels was next to none and decided to leave and start his own company, Monolith Soft, where he sort of kicked off the Xeno franchise so to speak. A few games, or rather a couple of games, we get to Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and he finally reunites with Nomura to help him do designs for the torn characters, and if you played Xenoblade Chronicles 2, you can instantly tell that Nomura drew these characters. They all have this particular edge that is completely different from the other character designs, that and well, Completely different artists did different characters, so obviously there'd be noticeable differences. But I do think that the torn up designs especially do lend themselves for someone like Nomura to design them, considering all the plating and armor that's on the characters, sort of similar to the character designs for the very first few Final Fantasy games. And speaking of that, for the mainline numbered games, Nomura has designed characters for 7, 8, 10, 13, and I guess 15. He may have also designed some minor characters or monsters in other early numbered games like Setzer and Shadow from 6. 
but for Final Fantasy Dissidia, Nomura redid everyone. Okay, not everyone, but you know. I mentioned this very briefly before, but he sort of stabilized and developed a general universal style at this point. And it's interesting because even for the characters he already designed, you could obviously point out that the Dissidia designs definitely have a more anime twist to it. And I think by looking at this, one can really see what puts Nomura's style in the forefront compared to people like Yoshitaka Amano, Toshiyuki Itahana, or even Akiko Yoshida. In short, Nomura's style is just versatile for all Final Fantasy games. Come on, he even works for Super Smash Bros. But if he wants to bust out a realistic style, he will, as in the case for this piece he did for Cloud to commemorate the release for Final Fantasy VII Remake. I can't really speak on what medium he uses, but there are some videos of him out there sketching with paper and pencil, so I'm going to assume he's mainly a traditional artist, but colors digitally. I say this because if you see some of his current illustrations, you can see these types of strokes, which I can only assume are pencil strokes. And along the lines of him having some sort of traditional medium type of effect, sometimes the type of rendering that he does is akin to a hazy watercolor effect. The edges are very soft and sometimes the colors go right off the lines, but it has this like effect of like being in a dream. Nomura often uses this rendering effect with the title screens for Kingdom Hearts games and some other one-off illustrations. What makes these types of illustrations work is keeping all the colors more or less desaturated, while at the same time having low contrast in values. What I mean by that is if you grayscale the image, you'll notice that the values are more or less all in the same range. It helps get the fuzzy dream-like vibe. Having the background sort of fade off to white also helps in that effect. Another rendering style he uses often is cell shading. He mainly uses bright flat tones and when adding lights or darks is usually added with a hard edge. And he mainly used this style for The World Ends With You and it works pretty well for it since again it complements the modern punk aesthetic that I mentioned earlier in the video since it gives vibes similar to graffiti. But he has also rendered like this for one off games like Final Fantasy 7 Before Crisis and again for Brave Friends and Musashi games. Early in the video, I discussed how Kingdom Hearts 1 sort of had a completely different art style than later Kingdom Hearts games and that's sort of what I want to bring up. Kingdom Hearts 1 did something similar to cell shading, but not exactly. Most of the colors were rendered very flat more or less with some soft shading in some areas like the hair and pants. The colors he used were also very bright and saturated, and he did some illustrations in Parasite Eve in this painting style as well. I guess it's sort of accurate to say that it has a very digital effect, for lack of a better phrase, but that slowly went away though. In fact, he even rendered characters from the world that ends with you in this later style, which to be fair is pretty neat because you get to see what those characters will look like outside of that game's art direction. Also, I think I mentioned this many times in many artist analysis before this one, but it bears repeating. A controlled and limited color palette is a trademark for a very good illustration. For a softer rendering style, he demonstrates this the best. He did some really good illustrations for Parasite Eve too. And man, I can't state this enough, but I really loved how his style was around this time. I don't hate what it is now, but he just doesn't draw like this anymore, I realized. Anyway, this piece is literally just variations of a yellow-orange, while the only blue is literally her eyes, and that blue is very desaturated to make it cohesive to all the saturated surrounding color. A similar case would be this piece from Kingdom Hearts. The overall color palette is a warm hue, therefore the cool hues have to be desaturated for the colors to work well, but even outside this particular rendering style, he still implements this technique. He seems to really like using warm color palettes, but you can always go the opposite direction and go for an overall cooler color palette, my personal favorite being this one. To wrap this all up, I think Nomura was definitely in his bag when he moved on from being a debugger and monster designer to being a full on character designer, and even a director for some games. I may have started this video saying that Kingdom Hearts is something that every JRPG fan should know by this point, but Final Fantasy VII is a game that kickstarted Nomura to this scene. He started off in a pretty anime art style first due to the limitations of technology at the time, but as he continued working on the Final Fantasy games, he began to draw in what he calls his true art style, which is the style I resonate with the most. I personally just like realistic styles. He would then design Sword for Kingdom Hearts, which he states is one of his favorite designs, and would honestly be a character that everyone would go crazy about. He can switch it up with games like The World Ends With You with a very urban art direction that demonstrates him using sharp jagged proportions as well as a cell shading style. He ultimately developed a style that fits pretty well with everything as he demonstrates when doing designs for Final Fantasy Dissidia and extending this style for later Kingdom Hearts games and for some illustrations with characters in The World Ends With You. And I know there are some character designs for games that I didn't mention such as Final Fantasy XIII and why Fang and Vanille have tribal designs compared to the rest of the cast and things like that, but honestly I could be here all day discussing all those intricacies. While he doesn't have any specific art books that I know about, you can just get the art books for the games he has worked on. I checked around for a Twitter too, but I couldn't find that either, let alone any social media account. If you guys know something, just leave it in the comments. With all that being said, Kingdom Hearts 4 just got teased a while ago and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is going to drop eventually, so I am optimistically looking forward to seeing what he comes up with next. What?
what is up guys it's been a while um it's almost been a month not exactly a month but um i've been away for a bit mainly i'm trying to edit this video i don't know why it took this one took so long to edit not not took a long time to edit but i would say the script portion of making this video took me a while because i didn't really know how to segment this video so um, i'm sorry for that this took a long time to get out um it's been like two months since my last artist analysis video and i felt bad to upload a new video that wasn't this video so that explains my sort of mini break well it wasn't a break i was i was working on this video so um i feel bad for not uploading um i think i've decided to um work in batches like make like a, a good grip of videos and sort of spread out uploading them so it sort of takes off the stress of me making a video uploading it making another video uploading it and, but and i'll instead i'll just make a whole bunch of videos and you know give me some breathing room to make videos while i, or, or I already have some videos in the backlog ready to upload so that's what i might start doing um yeah i hope you enjoyed this video tatsune nomura um he is an artist that i have known for for a while so again yeah i hope you enjoyed this video um more art videos more like actually drawing videos or painting videos are gonna come soon after this one and more frequently and short since youtube just made me like sign something or like agree to something to get monetized for short so i'm more inclined to do that more often too so look forward to that um if you like the video like comment and if you want you could subscribe i don't mind if you don't my social media accounts are in the description so you can follow those if you want to as well anyway thank you thank you so much for waiting for me and watching the video up to this point i'll see you guys hopefully in the next one and hopefully very soon